Hi there everyone, Rob here with your evening Western Pacific weather update. It's currently the 15th of June 2012 and today we are still watching a severe now tropical storm Guchoi. That is by the Japan Meteorological Agency and they are expecting us to upgrade to a typhoon. Thus we are going to be calling it a typhoon throughout the remainder of this broadcast here. Actually the Joint Typhoon Warning Center out of Pearl Harbor has already upgraded this system with winds upwards of about 90 gusting up to about 110 knots so at this time a very strong and severe system and unfortunately it does look like it's going to be continuing to intensify here mainly due to a abundant amount of moisture flow coming in from the south actually you can see it here on the infrared satellite imagery of all that moisture being pulled in from the southwest monsoon across Mindanao this is actually causing the risk of flooding out here but it also is getting wrapped around this system on the other hand though you have a uh, dry air coming in from the north out of the west pack high so that's kind of subduing uh, too rapid of intensification from this storm but still sea surface temperatures are very warm out here above 30 degrees that's actually two to three degrees above average for this time of year so that is going to be allowing the storm to continue to develop as we go through the coming days here but this is actually just looking at what the uh, trim satellite imagery is showing right now all of this heavy moisture just falling here across the eastern Philippines at this time and look over here towards the west uh, around the uh, west coast of Luzon down th uh, through Palawan here where earlier this week there has been several reports of deaths uh, upwards of about nine at this time six due to a vessel sinking here just off the coast of Palawan also in Davao City uh, southwest monsoon caused flash flooding killing two people People. So uh, with this storm pushing up here from the south, you can see all this moisture here actually in some of these uh, areas in the darker reds, that's indicating about 10, uh, 10 to 20 millimeters in just the past several hours. So short time heavy rainfall, but as this pushes off here from the south, it's going to be enhancing this, bringing yet more moisture. So for you in Manila, even though you're not expecting direct landfall from this storm, at least at this time, which we're going to get to in a second, do be prepared for some localized flash flooding as that moisture continues to stream in from the west. And that is almost about exactly the case here. If we pull up uh, the Pegasus, newest feature from the radar imagery here from NOAA, the Nationwide Operational Assessment of Hazards, and you can see uh, lots of that moisture pushing in from the west here across the South China Sea onwards towards Manila. So if you are seeing some rain showers this evening, unfortunately, it may clear up for a short duration going into Saturday, but then I do expect it to pick back up again. So uh, definitely going to be continuing the washes here forward, a threat of flash floods, but also landslides here across much of the Philippines. And actually here in Samar down towards the south, uh, Signal Force 1 has been issued uh, due to a severe tropical storm or typhoon here, Gucho. And that is issued by Bagasa, just stating that some minor roof damage could occur, uh, falling of branches, etc. Uh, that is directly related to the tropical storm, but they're also still issuing the warnings on the southwest monsoon. So a double uh, hazards coming across from the system. But this is the warning from Bagasa, expecting it to remain off the coast into about the 18th here, going into uh, Sunday and the Monday as it remains offshore, and then pushing off there towards the north. Uh, this is only as far as our warning on the system once it leaves the Philippine area responsibility. So after that, what is going to be expected out here? Well, I know I've been talking about this rainy season stationary boundary that has actually been bringing some flooding rains out there across Taiwan off towards uh, the southern portions of Japan. This is where it actually is right about now. Over Tokyo, uh, throughout your Tuesday, actually, you should be expecting some pretty heavy rainfall due to this boundary not related to the storm at all. So uh, I do get those questions from time to time. It's actually totally separate features. But what this is going to be causing is this storm to push off towards the northeast once it becomes interacting with it. But the last several days, this has actually been down farther towards the south. But since this boundary is lifting, it's quasi-stationary. So it pushes from the north towards the south. This storm very well likely will run just along the southern periphery of it, right over Okinawa, and then off towards Japan. Pan. With that said, uh, for those of you in Okinawa, you definitely should be getting ready for a severe system at this time. Uh, potentially typhoon strength winds and even super typhoon uh, status could be very possible here. I don't think it should get quite that strong, but a strong typhoon nonetheless could be occurring here across much of Okinawa. So let's pull up what the models are actually showing here. And now that we've looked at the satellite imagery and kind of gauged on where this front is going to be. 
And as you can see here, a very tight consensus with uh, much of the uh, model forecast here. All of them pushing off towards the north, just east of the Philippines. So for those of you in northeastern Luzon who have been very worried about a possible landfall, it doesn't look like it's going to be happening. But as I've been uh, kind of sound like a broken record here, that southwest monsoon very well be maybe enhanced with that moisture pulling in and feeding the storm system. So around this area, and especially along the west coast, you're going to be wanting to watch for those floods and landslides. But as this continues to run north, uh, similarly, Similar situation very well could be happening here in southern Taiwan. Uh, a copious amount of flooding rains throughout the duration of this week. Uh, plenty of reports of deaths out here, very deadly situation. So southwest monsoon being enhanced there is not going to be helping at all. But the remain gusty winds very well could be here along the southern Japanese islands. And even pushing off towards the southern portions of Kyushu. Uh, hopefully by that time the storm should start be going extra tropical, but I would not be surprised if Fukuoka, even off as far northeast as Osaka, you could be getting some very gusty winds from this into about the early to mid part of next week. And let's take a look at actually what the Joint Typhoon Warning Center is showing here. And they're expecting those winds to max out right about 110, gusting up to 135 knots. Uh, then starting to see a decrease as it begins to recurve here and pushes off there towards the northeast. But look at this. On the 19th, this is actually still 85 to 105 knot winds. That is actually about a Category 2 uh, typhoon. So still very strong storm here. And if it does run right over Okinawa, you're definitely going to be wanting to watch for this risk of severe damage. But let's look at... A JMA as well because uh, their track is very similar to what JTWC is forecasting. Usually these two tracks between these two agencies are actually quite different, but uh, since there's a good model consensus, also the westerlies really are playing a major role in this, and once they start to get wrapped up with those tight upper-level winds here from the jet stream, uh, the storm really does recurve on a basically about really good timing. So uh, very good news as far as the forecast track. There's a lot of high confidence that is going to be taking this track. Bad news, it is going to be taking this track or something similar to it, which brings me to my next point, is uh, where exactly will the storm be going? Well, at least at this time, both the uh, agencies out here are really expecting the move here just towards the northwest of Okinawa before pushing off here, affecting the rest of the southern Japanese islands. If it does take this track, this is actually the worst possible scenario. You always remember that you have these cyclonic winds like that going around these tropical systems. Now as this continues to push in from the south, it will be wrapping around the center of circulation in here and that's going to bring in all those winds due south or from the south right on shore here along the southern portions of Okinawa. On top of that, you have the storm surge risk. You have the tropical system, low pressure here. All of that water is going to be pushed in from the south and pushed on shore as opposed to if the storm goes to the right of the, tra of the uh, islands here, then it will be pushed actually from the north, but good news, only a limited fetch area coming in, vice just the entire East China Sea. So the surge would actually be a little bit less here if it goes towards the right of the islands. On the other hand, if it comes in from the south. Now, this is really uh, going to be coastal surging. Anybody living in the immediate area of the coastlines here definitely needs to be watching this very closely as those waves could be breaking up and you could be having some coastal flooding. But on top of that, uh, wind damage is going to be a risk. If it does take this track right from quadrant is where you have the highest wind potential. With that said, uh, do uh, take in anything that's outside. If you have any uh, lawn furniture, for example, laying out in your yards, you do want to strap that down because that could be bringing some unnecessary debris. So uh, it definitely could be a very dangerous situation. It's always uh, continue to check back in here and with your local agencies. I can say that for Kadena here and all the military bases on Okinawa, I know we get a lot of questions about that. At this time, they're still in T-Core 4. I would not be surprised at the very least going in through your Saturday if this is upgraded to 3 and then eventually 2. But a very long update today. Thank you for everyone that actually sat through this whole update. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, as always, please post them in the comment box below. And it would really help us out if you hit the like button or subscribe to our channel or the other channels uh, from here at westernpacificweather.com. I'll be putting the annotations on the screen at this point. So thanks again for watching, everybody. As always, stay safe out there. And lastly, the big reminder, we are not an official agency here at westernpacificweather.com. Do not use our videos to make any life uh, decisions, life-threatening decisions, that is. And if you uh, do need to do those, though, please refer to Pegasa, Japan Meteorological Agency, or any of your local official agencies out here in the Western Pacific. Have a great day.